Davey, have you decided on a game two starter? And if so, who is it? It's uh, TBD right now. Um, yeah, we're going to wait and see. Does, does the game one result factor into that? Um, not much. I mean, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. You know, obviously, uh, you know, Stevens threw the ball well yesterday for us. Um, we have other options, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it transpires over the next day. Jamal. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, is Steven a candidate to still come back after throwing uh, 30, 30 some pitches yeah. like yesterday? Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, most definitely. What would have to? We, we, we have to see. I mean, it's, obviously, it's going to be a quick turnaround. Um, I would just want to give him a day to recoup. I mean, uh, we just got off a flight, so I uh, want to see how he feels. Uh, Mark, in the middle. You talked for a few days about how you had to just go all in to win the one game to get to this point. Now, does that mindset have to change when you're looking at a five-game series and not just the players you put on the roster, but the decisions you make and uh, to manage through through a game and through a whole series? You know, it's it's always, um, you know, right now it's it's one. You know, we're playing for one game. You know, that's and that's and my message has always been clear, but now it means more than ever. Hey, we need to go one and zero. You know, it's important, especially to win that first game tomorrow of a series and then go from there. Um, feel pretty confident. Pat's ready to go. So uh, let's focus on just winning the game tomorrow. Back right. Dave, given the strength of your starters and when you see teams in past postseasons like the Red Sox last year use starters as relievers in the course of a series, is that something that – is something that you think about when it comes to processing and mapping out how this series will look? Absolutely. I mean, um, we've done our due diligence uh, work, and we're still working on um, some roster construction, uh, talking to guys uh, uh, and how they're feeling and their availability. But um, like I said, these are, to me, these, these are all one game, one game playoffs. They all are. I mean, it's important if we're winning. To win, to get ahead, stay ahead. Um, so we're going to use all we're going to use all options necessary to w win a game. Uh, back, Adam. Dave, uh, Walker Bueller used the term "throwback" about this series in the sense that there's so many good starting pitching options on both sides, w with so many teams using bullpens more and more. Do you, do you sort of think of that this series in that way? Sort of old school, really good starting pitching probably, you know, every night. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know what? Good for him that he said that. Um, yeah, I mean, both sides got good starting pitching. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be, a, uh, like I said, you know, the reason why we're here, I said it all year, is our starting pitchers kept us afloat, and, um, and they pitched really well all year. So, yeah, we depend a lot on our starting pitching. But there's other aspects of the game that we need to do, and uh, I always ask the boys to just come out and play the game the right way. Back left. Uh, Anthony was just in here, and he said the biggest difference for him this season at the plate is that he's getting lucky more. Uh, <laughs> I, I imagine there's a little more to it than that from your perspective. Um, what's he leaving out? You know what? I think he's been lucky for a lot of years now. I mean, he's he's been good. He's just been consistent. Um, I often say, you know, he's, he missed six weeks of the season, so just imagine if he had those six weeks, what kind of numbers he really would have put up. He's just that kind of player. You know, for us, he's a guy that makes our lineup go. It really is. Uh, I've said this before. From the other side, when, when I didn't know him as well, just seeing him as a player, I always said the same thing. I said, man, this guy's just Mr. Consistent. I mean, he puts the ball in play, has power to all, all fields. Um, he's not afraid. What makes him really good, I think, is that he's not afraid to hit with two strikes. Um, and he'll batter you up there and hit the ball the other way. But um, when he gets the two strikes, there's no no panic. I think he's has one of the best two strike approaches in the game. And again, Jake. just to follow up on that, I know all the MVP votes are in, but like, what's your elevator pitch for Anthony to win that award? I think he's MVP. I've been saying it for months. Yeah, um, I think he's MVP. I think he should win a Gold Glove. I mean, he's been phenomenal this year, all the way around. Um, 
it's obviously a big year for him, for Rendon, and kind of what could come this winter. Uh, have you seen him just handle that this year, especially kind of last year? You had another guy who was also dealing with that. And at the end of the season and such, as the end might be near for Rendon and his contract, have you seen anything different or changed at all, or has he kind of still been the same guy? He's been, as we all know him, he's been the same guy day in, day out. Um, doesn't talk about it much. Doesn't really say anything about it much. He just comes to the ballpark, uh, gets his work in, and gets ready to play every single day. Um, you know, it's a testament to the kind of person that he is, that he knows his job, and he just comes to the ballpark, and he's just trying to help us win every day. Top to front. Are you ever concerned about players in that situation? And when you were playing, did you see teammates who that might have gotten in their head and subsequently leaked onto the field and some of their results weren't what they would want because they were thinking about what was to come down the road? Oh, absolutely. I've seen, I've seen players free, that become free agents have uh, not so good years, you know, years that they're not accustomed to having because that's what they're worried about. Um, he hasn't done that, obviously. I mean, like I said, he he feels like it's – Whatever happens, happens. Everything's going to take care of itself. He just wants to go out there and play and help us win. I mean, he's always said that he's here to help us win games. Uh, in the middle, Mark. Was there any point last night that you thought about warming Corbin up and the fact that you were able to win the game without him? Did that was that a big advantage for you to know that you now you have him at at full strength for game one? I wouldn't have warmed him up unless we had to go extra innings. Um, that would have been the only case. Uh, you know, when we took the lead, you know, we, we had Hudson and Dew, who's, who's been uh, back there for us, you know. Um, so, yeah, and it's kind of nice coming in today knowing that, you know, Patrick's going to go game one and we didn't have to get him up. Uh, Jesse? <clears throat> Dave, a lot of people talk about how yesterday you guys kind of got over the hump in the sense that this team finally won an elimination game. How do you balance being proud of that while also knowing that you know, there's a lot more to do um, you know, moving forward. Yeah, there's a lot more to do. Um, and we have, to, we have to start by playing game one, you know, focus on game one. Um, those guys, we all were excited about what happened yesterday and what transpired. Um, but they understand what's ahead of them. So, uh, you know, today we got on, a, got on a plane. They got to sleep in their own bed last night. Got up this morning, got on a plane. Um, Wanted them to all to come to the ballpark and kind of stretch and, and take some ground balls and whatnot and um, get ready for tomorrow. Back left, David. Uh, you guys haven't beaten Clayton Kershaw or Ryu this year. You have beaten Bueller. Were you a little surprised <laughs> to see him in game one? No, I mean, uh, after what I've seen from Bueller, man, he's, he's got really good stuff, you know. Um, so, you know, we, we you know, all – Night last night, I was tossing them what they were going to try to do, and it doesn't surprise me that you know Bueller's going to pitch game one. I mean, um, he's been a guy this year for them. You know, he's been really good. So um, we got a tough battle, you know, ahead of us. But you know, I know that our boys are up to it. Uh, Jamal uh, Hudson over Doolittle in the ninth inning uh, yesterday was it a matchup thing? Or was it just kind of Hudson was already warming to come into the game? Just, just what was the? Yeah, he was. There? He was. He was already up. Um, you know, and I like, I like actually, I like the matchup with Hudson and those guys down the bottom. Um, we got, uh, we had do up for the top of the order if we got there. Um, so he was going to pitch if we got to Grisham. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Spanish? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Hi, David. Um, ¿Qué dirías que resalta de Patrick Corbin en juegos anteriores cuando se han enfrentado con los Dodgers y ha tenido mucho success. Sí, no, él ha pichado muy bien contra los Dodgers. Uh, él le, le gusta pichar aquí, yo no sé por qué, pero le gusta. Pero uh, vamos a ver si sigue así mañana. Que, pero para mí él es uno de los mejores de nosotros. So, uh, mucho feliz que está pichando mañana.